welcome Ibrahim Fakir, Somato Dafigeni, and Mighty Jamie. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you Good to evening. all three of you for coming through. Just what you make of today's uh, uh, events. I'll start with you, Ibrahim. Well, I thought it was a continuation of the theater of the absurd because I don't understand how a leader of a party, or well, now resigned leader of the party, says that perhaps this party is not the party to lead South Africa into this future of united South Africa for all, but by the same token, simultaneously, I'll remain the party's parliamentary leader and its MP until it has a policy conference. Now, this is consistent with the capriciousness of the way in which the DA has often opportunistically behaved because they speak from both sides of their mouth, a lot like the ANC, just by the way. So we don't know quite what to believe. You know, Musi Maimani one day didn't believe in social grants and the next day wanted to double them. At some stage didn't believe in the death penalty, then did. Then didn't believe in gay rights and then did. Uh, and then didn't think about a big state, then did. Then wanted privatization, then didn't. Then wanted to use race as a proxy for transformation, then didn't. Same, by the way, with Mashaba. So one's never quite sure what they believe. It's entirely inconsistent. It's flip-flopping, a lot like the alliance partners in some of the metros. And so you don't quite know where does this guy stand. So what do you think actually happened? I think this is the culmination which is more of a political meltdown of serious, deep, systemic, structural contradictions within the DA on the issue of identity and policy that they have not resolved. And that in itself now came to a head in the form of what is to do with the party once they realized that the party was not growing as they were projecting and the investment they had calculated to grow into the black uh, constituency was not happening at a sustained pace, whereas other whites were now hemorrhaging to the Freedom Front Plus. So it is that fundamental issue which ironically does not even appear in the DA review panel. They talk of leadership, they talk of policy uncertainty, but the most fundamental issue with the DA is how does it deal with the legacy of the past? How does it deal with the albatross of being seen as a party of white privilege? Those are deep fundamental issues that they are scattering around, but also at another level. It's just the political reality where whites might have experienced an existential crisis. They've seen in Zimbabwe whites being crowded completely out of political space. They are left to play golf, to be in the farms and everywhere. In Namibia, the same thing. Now, they might have made a calculated risk that we need to wrestle this back and control it firmly. You weren't surprised, were you? No, I wasn't surprised. In fact, this is what we discussed on Monday. I said this was the only door that was left open for him. I think to respond to Ibrahim, he probably stayed in the job because he still needs uh, that job security. You know, part of the problem of being an African politician is that you don't have, you know, a trust fund to go back home to and tweet happily and make YouTube channels unlike other people. But I do think that um, the one challenge of growth that the DA has had has really beca has been because, one, they've missed the moment and they failed to craft a message for the largest demographic, which is the youth. So missing the moment, if you look at the DA's responses to roads must fall, their response to fees must fall, they were contrarian to students. In fact, they were behaving like the Republican Party did when student uh, movements were coming out in the campuses there. Helen Zill was actually very critical. It's one of the reasons why she calls Twitter a cesspool, because she doesn't understand the movements and the politics of this particular generation. So while this is good, in one respect, it's good that it provides a clear leadership within the DA, a clear messaging from the DA. The challenge is that leadership and that message may be a solution for a problem that actually has been misdiagnosed. Because if you are failing to resonate, they fail to resonate on land, they fail to resonate on free education, they fail to resonate on discussions around privilege. And now what they're solving is this 
viewed hemorrhaging of white people to the Freedom Front Plus and maybe even the ANC. However, the deeper analysis has to be why for the first time in our electoral history are we failing to gain resonance with a large enough group of people to gain momentum? And I think that's an Achilles heel in this whole uh, solution that they've come up with. If we accept, okay, you disagree. No, of course, and on two things I disagree. A is, and I think it's a bit glib to say that my money is going to be short of things to do once he leaves politics. You make a good point. Of course, many black politicians don't have the luxury of trust funds and so on. But I don't think Mr. Maimani is in any position, given his church and so on, uh, that he'll be short of anything, to be, to be perfectly honest. So I'm, I'm not sure that that's the, that's the reason. Second, is I think that DA put itself in this infantuous position. But you've got to admire them for this much. And it's not a lot that I admire them for. That they resisted the pull and the lure towards this crude identity, identity politic. And had they relented, as Jamie suggests, on a whole range of these things, then why be the DA? They could have become the ANC, or they could have become the EFF, or they could have joined civil movements and started also echoing the identity politics. And that's what Zilla fought back against. So the but, difficulty but. is a party has to distinguish itself. And I'm not entirely certain that it's only white voters that the DA bled. The DA bled for black voters too. Since 2011, in African townships, the DA has been doing a 2.5% increase election on election. This is the first election in which they lost uh, that support, even amongst black voters. Let me actually advance what I said 10 years ago. I said DA will grow. Before it reaches 25%, it may stagnate or decline. The reason is how it was formed. It was white English-speaking liberals very few. Then they decided, let's have Afrikaners who were taken from the new National Party in the main. A bit of Louis Lates people. And then later on, they went on to get the minorities Indian colors. They said they were the party of minorities. And lastly, once they had secured that base, they wanted the black majority as the late comers. Now, as you bring each constituency as a group, there are certain deep structural tensions and demands within the party because it didn't grow organically and naturally. It was a choreography. The most ironic thing about the DA is rhetorically it denies the issue of identity. In its planning and execution, it has the most aggressive affirmative action it has ever created. It has microwaved young leaders before they were even ready mm. to positions. Now, when they start believing they really are in control, it becomes a political abattoir where they are fattened, they are liked, then they are slaughtered. That is, to me, the, 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 the paradox of denying identity and using identity. And that's perhaps what I mean when I talk about capricious opportunism, because you're taking a bunch of black leaders or purported leaders who aren't in fact ready to be leaders. And I think my money has in some instances shown that up, the inconsistency in the way in which he takes a position on certain things or in, in applying the DA's own internal rules. And then those guys get elevated to positions which they ordinarily should not. So they undermine their own argument about meritocracy. But I, I want to say something, though, not to dismiss a lot of the analysis you guys have given, is that I don't think that um, misunderstanding the political moment is purely a reductionist point to it's just identity politics. This is what is happening. If you look at global patterns, you've got a, a massive critique which is happening of late capitalism. People are saying we go through all of this educational process to make pennies on the dollar or, pe or, or cents on the rand in this particular context, which is why you've seen the Yellow Vest movement. You've seen a lot of these pushbacks happening within the global workspace. Similarly, you are seeing critiques of democracy happening where people are saying this democratic design that you've created has not led to um, you know, reductions in inequality, etc. So the relationship between capitalism and democracy and the way power has been operating globally is, is also 
uh, expressing itself within the South African landscape, but also the culture wars which are happening globally are also manifesting. A lot of people don't understand that when the discussions around decolonization happen, when the discussions around roads must fall and all of the other statues which continue to exist happen, they require a response from the political leadership. One, not necessarily saying we're going to pander to race, but one that acknowledges the pain that people are feeling, one that tries to create remedies that are creative. The DA uh, in the last five years has stopped being a party of ideas. They've just been regurgitating Republican talking points, which is why they're wondering why they're being described as a right-wing party in South Africa. Because globally, the, the global economy has shifted to the left. I'm talking about the political economy. And if you remain in the center without modifying your thoughts or your ideas, you will increasingly sound very old school and very simplistic in your responses to That's social true. problems. <laughs> that raises the question. I made the point a few days ago that having observed the American politics and politics elsewhere for years, what we see as a liberal party in South Africa is actually a conservative party elsewhere. When you look at some of the policies, that's the first one. The second one, I take your point that the general failure of a global system that was supposed to be inclusive. Now, in the last few uh, you know, years or decades, only 1%, 2% has been growing, whilst the rest, and also the cultures being you know, marginalized, whilst the Western wave is coming up. Some of the identity politics, some of the anti-establishment, is a crisis in a global capital system in the absence also of an alternative left or alternative third way, you do have a sense of a crisis where people are saying what you're doing or saying is simply not changing our lives. So that at another level is the broad issue that DA has been facing, which then takes us to a question. Can classical liberalism, which mainly focus on an individual and opportunities, work in a society like South Africa, which has a deeply entrenched colonial and apartheid geography. What does opportunity mean? You don't think, Ibrahim Fakir, that uh, it could well be that uh, Musi Maimane looked at what he was confronted with and saw that uh, he was, I mean, the odds were stashed against him, right? And then felt maybe if he, he gets relieved of the leadership responsibilities and then he he together with other like-minded people can redefine um, you know the role that this party um, can play continue to stay inside and uh, with them uh, begin to strategize uh, for the future that that could well be but I can't imagine that that would be a case uh, of doing so, of something you can do easily because so that would be cheaper than going outside so, and yeah. forming going, your own new okay, thing. Going, going outside, I think, is a non-option, to be perfectly honest. Because firstly, my money has proven that he himself does not have a solid philosophic theoretical base on which to stand. Whether you want to call it liberalism or conservatism doesn't matter. Because if you ask him, my money, do you want to preserve institutions? He would say, yes, he wants to preserve institutions. That's a classically conservative idea, the preservation of institutions, rules, and processes and procedures. But if you ask him, do you want to unbundle utilities? Do you want to subcontract utilities at municipal level? Do you want to outsource, restructure, and redefine? Uh, some of the DA would say yes, and he would say no. But if he goes to his own entity, where does he stand on those issues? If you don't do those things, then like Mashaba, you're not going to be able to claim to be a classically liberal or a black liberal progressive party because you've got to do those things. So I think it's actually much less grand than we think it is about these debates about grand capitalism and so on in the global context. There was a real role for the DA to play, and that was serious oversight, which, which they did, by the way. But then I think got lost along the path by these kind of opportunistic arrangements they got into in the metros. 
uh, because that certainly didn't serve them well. They weren't able to effectively exercise oversight and play a role as an opposition party and remain a governing party where they were in their little enclave in the Western Cape and perhaps wait a few more elections before you capture power. That may have been more prudent. But I think their sort of idea that let us simply be anti-ANC and get rid of them and so you can capture them in the essence of saying all the DA was and all that united them was everything that they were against. There's nothing that you can say that the DA were for. I think that's part of the undoing. Now, Ibrahim Fakir, Somado Dafigeni, and Mighty Jamie are staying with me as we unpack the, we look at the meaning of uh, the resignations of uh, Democratic Alliance leader Musi Maimane, party chair, Arthur Trollip, uh, Johannesburg Mayor Herman Mashaba, as well, of course, as uh, the CEO of the party a few days ago. We're going to look at what uh, this means, uh, not only for the party, but indeed for uh, the politics of uh, South Africa. Now, during a press conference um, this afternoon, Maimane also claimed that he has suffered a series of personal attacks designed to ruin his reputation. Over the past few months, it's become more and more clear to me that there does exist a few within the DA who do not see eye to eye with me. I don't share the vision for the party and the direction it was taking. There have been several months of consistent and a coordinated attack on me and my leadership to ensure that this project failed or I failed. In fact, this extended to a campaign that was run on the front pages of, Afrikaans, of the Afrikaans Weekly paper in an attempt to undermine my name and my integrity. This cowardly behavior has put my wife and our kids in great danger as I watched, often in disgust, of the pictures of our home being published in our media and the dangers that went with that. I was made to fail. I had a family to think about as well. Well, I do think that if you replay this clip, it might as well be one of the ANC leaders exiting. Uh, it might be, uh, you know, the same. Most interesting here, I think, whatever black caucus might have been thinking they underestimated the hegemonic power structures and how they function, the intellectual infrastructure within the DA. If you do have three white male to assess the performance of the party, and they are seasoned members of the party, you have the former leader leaving the party panning down some articles which say the party should change direction, going to stay in an institute which also makes a contribution on where the party should go. If a My Money campaigned for elections during 2016, but during the bargaining for coalition, James Self comes to be the face of bargaining, it doesn't take much to tell the intellectual infrastructure of this particular entity. And I can imagine that even the funders on the other side have disproportionate influence. So those kinds of things, if they underestimate them, and I can predict that they will be frustrated and they'll be tied down with Helen Zill with such an overbearing influence. They'll be crowded out of the party. They may try to start another party they may try to start other projects outside. And I suspect it is for that reason that my money was pledging so much support for Mashaba and so forth, looking beyond the DA. Because it was quite bizarre and also showed the lack of depth and experience for a political leader. When your party is trashed, you are the president of it. Mm -hmm and you come and endorse the person you say, I'll always be with you. It was rather such a bizarre arrangement that I saw. I couldn't understand what was happening, and I'm sure the first reprimand 
mm -hmm. uh, in the meeting was just that. I'm going to ask both of you to hold your thoughts right there because we are going to continue with uh, this conversation for some time to come still.